it's the Dota Weekly Show. Yay! Hey guys, welcome to the Dota Weekly Show. Yay! It's a show that tells you exactly what's been happening in the Dota New Universe for the past week. I'm Luminous, your host for the show, and let's get right into the news. First big piece of news that ESWC is announced in October. Now, as you recall from uh, Dota Weekly Show number two, WDC was also announced in October. So, um, this might be a concern for one of the Chinese team, the Chinese team, to be sent to WDC. Because, um, you know, they have to be in Paris and then they have to fly back in all like two weeks. It's not going to be too big of a deal, but it might be, you know, mentally strainful. It might be tiring. I, you know. And for the teams that are traveling to ESWC and then also traveling to China, there might be some sponsorship issues. So that's my primary worry to have such two big tournaments in such a short span of time. Uh, for fans, you know, we're, we're all cool. We could, there's more replays for us to watch. But I'm just a little bit worried about the professional players. So that's news number one. News number two is the Stars War 6 tournament being held in China. LGD claim number one, eHome claim number two. And uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, we're thinking, hey, you know, CCM is going to be great, Tai is going to be great, uh, WE is going to be great. But hey, you know, it's it's the teams that we know and love back in 2010. That's in number one and number two. Uh, but in, during the tournament, at the end of the tournament, there's a lot of stuff that happened. Uh, for full information, I recommend you to go to SG Gamer and uh, GG Dynet to check them out. Here's some of them. Nirvana China got an entire new roster. You, you want to check that out? Um, there's a great interview from A20. You kind of just follow up his history of where he has been and, and you know, where he's going and whatnot. So that's a, worth checking out as well. And I think the most biggest and controversial one is that 2009 got tattled out by a fellow commentator. The reason why he was kicked off LGD in the first place because he withheld bonus money that was supposed to go to his teammates for himself. So it's it's not might not be the classiest thing that he's uh, done in the Dota scene. But I mean, if you want to look at it in a very, I guess, cynical kind of view, a lot of professional sport, a lot of professional gaming circuits also have kind of something kind of similar. It's, it's a shame that Dota would have, you know, something that dark as well. And I was even thinking, you know, maybe sh maybe I shouldn't tell everyone about it. It's it's kind of not the, the the side that we want to reflect off Dota, right? But I feel that hey, you know, I think people deserve to know. They can make their own decision about 2009. I still think 2009 is a great player, um, but you know. Hey, uh, you know, I'll let you make your own decision on that case. Again, for, for all the information that I'm using for this news, go check out sggamer.dota and gg.net.dota. Just a lot more stuff that you can read on and uh, you can get you know more enlightened on, on the topics like that. Now for the mechanics this week, it's as messy as the Star War 6 tournament. It's even probably even more messy than that. I'm talking about bashes, critical strikes, true strikes, and how it all stacks, don't stack, and buff plays, it's just very, very confusing. Hopefully by the end of this, you would not be as confused as before. Now let's look at the melee side and the range side, because it's kind of a little bit different. For melee heroes, critical strikes never stack, which by the way, critical strikes don't stack for anything, don't stack for range as well. Now the chance of having a crit, if you let's say buy two crystals, you, could, you will increase your chance of actually having a crit. But you're not gonna have, you're not gonna double the crit if you have one more critical strike item. So let's, you know, let's leave it at that. For bashes, it will stack. Now the time of bash, the duration of the stun lock is, is not gonna increase. It's gonna, it's gonna use the longest stun lock item or, or skill you have. So let's say the highest skill that you you have is bashes for two seconds, then it will just bash for two seconds uh, when when both proc, of course. But the damage does proc. So for example, if you have six monkey king bars, six monkey king bars. Um, there's a 7% chance that you could bash with all 6 MKBs and like deal a 600 nuke. Like literally a 600 damage nuke. Which by the way, physical bash is considered a physical spell and it goes through BKB. It's something good to know that you know it'll go through magic immunity. It's helpful for some late game basher picked up situations. So yes, you can bash with like 6 MKBs and just like dag and nuke someone's in the face. So, you know, I suggest 6 Sage build in the past, I would vouch for, I, I would vouch for a 6 uh, MKB build in the future. Do try it out at home. Bashes and critical strikes are also as buff placers. And buff placers generally don't stack with other buff placers, but for melees, it do. So, for example, you can have an anti-mage, you could actually mana burn, orb of venom, slow, um, MKB bash, basher bash, critical strike, and same shit. Like you could do all of them in one single hit. It's ridiculous how good it stacks, how good stuff stack on melee heroes. Um, and that's pretty much it. Melee is very very simple. Most of everything, just pretty much everything stacks. Now for the range, it's it's oh my god, it's freaking confusing. 
Critical Strike do not stack. Of course, like I said earlier, the chance of crit, crit could stack, you know, but the actual crit itself do not stack. Bashes don't stack. The chance of bashes do stack. So let's say if you have multiple bashes, of course you're gonna bash more. Uh, the, the damage don't stack, the uh, bash time don't stack, none of it stacks. Um, and True Strike buff placer and the crit buff placer and the, and the basher buff placer, none of it stacks. That's why when you buy a MKB on Sniper, you gotta turn off True Strike, which is considered as a buff placer, in hopes that you will work with your headshot, which is a bash. So one more time, bash also is a buff placer, True Strike is a buff placer. If you want both of them to work, you gotta turn off one. So you wanna turn off the True Strike, because you still want the bash, right? So it's very, very confusing. Another very confusing case is that, let's say you're a destroyer, and you, for some whatever you reason you wanna pick up a basher, you can still bash uh, when you throw off your arcane arcane orb hits, but the thing is that uh, let's say you're let's say you're bashing on an arcane orb hit, your arcane orb won't do the extra damage and and whatnot. You can only get the bash, or you can only get the uh, arcane orb effect. You cannot get both. So again, for most range stuff, it does not stack. By the way, crit and bash will stack. They will stack. You can crit and bash off the same hit. That's pretty cool. Uh, but aside from that, I am pretty sure nothing like buff placers, crits, bashers don't really stack. All right, so that's that's the mechanic for this week. I I, I uh, urge you to check out the link below. I'm gonna link you to the Play Dota mechanics page where it talks about all the orb effects, all the you know stacking and whatnot. Just to check it out. If you're ever confused, check out that link because it has a lot of information. The table takes <laughs> takes a while to get used to, but yeah. I, I, I urge you to check it out because it's just very useful information that you want to check out. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about the Dota Weekly Show is that I'm officially, officially dropping that ridiculous building. It, it just didn't work out. <laughs> like the builds that you guys kind of gave me, it's, eh, it's, it's not very fun. Let's, let me put it that way. It's not very fun for me to try it in pubs. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now it's time for me to give you guys some builds to try out. Um, this this new thing is kind of modeled after Day 9's uh, Fun Day Mondays uh, from his dailies. If you don't know who Day 9 is, don't worry about it. Uh, what he basically did is propose some ridic ridiculous stuff to his uh, viewers. And then uh, hopefully when the viewers are trying his ridiculous build or idea or whatnot, they could A, learn something from it, B, have fun, or both. So I'm going to be doing something similar for, for Dota. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is give you guys something ridiculous, like a ridiculous uh, arbitrary constraint or something. And then you guys supply me of your pub replays of doing that. And I'll select you know one or two replays and kind of show it in the Dota Weekly Show and say, Hey, you know, this guy is absolutely a beast for trying this out and whatnot. Of course, I will have a, uh, you know, uh, I guess a Hall of Honor or something ridiculous like that to kind of say, Hey, this guy won. Uh, the challenge for Dota Weekly Show 4, and then this guy won it for 5, something like that. Of course, you could take this challenge on by yourself, but it's going to be a lot harder and a lot more challenging. It makes a lot more sense if you do it with you know, an entire team of 3 or 4 guys, or maybe even 5 guys. If you have 4 or 5 friends on a pub, do try it out. So the thing I want to try it out is actually go through the entire game with 2 inventory slots. 2 inventory slots. Now, that might sound be like ridiculous, like, you know, isn't that kind of dumb? The idea I kind of came up with that challenge is I kind of want people to understand the difficulty uh, and the valuableness of valuableness the valuableness of having very limited item slots. Most people stack on items that they don't need. Like I see this in pro game a lot. So I want you to go through the game. I, I'm, I'm expect to see some very like big sacrifice. Hey, do I drop my boots? Do I drop my TP scroll? Like actually go through like a 30 minute game with two inventory slots and that I, I, I urge like you could I think you could learn a lot from that um, what items are very like insanely important uh, what items are not like and let's say you know hey TP scroll might not be the most important item let's say if you're shaker you need your dagger right so you need boots maybe um, so TP scroll might not be the thing hey if you're a support do I get do I get wards like do I just not get wards? like I don't know two inventory two item slots and some of you guys might say, oh, hey Lumi, I need to build a Scotty, do, do, what do I do? You use your chicken to do it, okay? Buy a chicken and use that. So only two inventory slots, so I'll, I only want to see 10 items from one team. So that's the challenge, that's the challenge. If you want to know how to send your replay to me, there's going to be full in information below uh, in the description. But basically, I want you to parse it on Dota Parser and then send it to the email below. Um, I don't know what the email is because I haven't made the account yet, but yeah. 
All right, so that's it for the show. I know it's a little bit long-winded. Um, I hope you guys want to try out this new thing.、Uh, it might be a little bit difficult to do an entire team challenge. In the future, I'll do a little bit more of a solo challenge. But the first one, I want to emphasize that Dota is a team game, so I want to do a team challenge. And hey, again, if you're pubbing with four or five guys, three or four guys, you know, give give the challenge a try. I, I think it will be very fun, and you can learn something from it. So that's it from the Dota Weekly Show. It's been a long one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Luminous signing off. See you guys.